We've got some breaking news on CBS Sports HQ. The Chicago Bears have agreed to terms with running back DeAndre Swift. The deal a reported three-year contract, $24 million. Our lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones having the details, some of the details on that. Swift ran for over 1,000 yards last year with the Eagles. Let's bring in our lead NFL insider for more on this. Uh, JJ, uh, I don't know if you're surprised by this move or not, but uh, certainly the Bears uh, getting themselves a, a proven running back on a three-year contract. That's right. So getting DeAndre Swift, who was with Detroit, and then, of course, Philadelphia, where he had that incredible season last year. And look, they were always going to be very active in the running back market. Uh, there was some talk that they were interested in Saquon Barkley. Uh, obviously, the Bears understood, uh, for whatever reasons, that they were not going to be able to get him. I, I don't want to act like uh, Barkley was the number one target, and then they pivoted. I don't actually know that, but certainly DeAndre Swift coming off the year that he just had uh, is a jewel of a running back. It's a three-year deal. I know there's a report out there of $24 million. It's a, it's a running back in today's NFL. So I'm going to wait to see the contract details on that one as well as a lot of these deals that start coming through later today. Um, but at least it sort of gets out there and sets uh, a market. And uh, whatever sort of the cash flows are going to be, uh, we'll worry about that stuff later. Right Right now, the Chicago Bears are finding a running back to help their quarterback of the future, and that should be Caleb Williams. He's going to have his pro day on March 20th at Southern Cal. Shortly thereafter, he's going to meet with the Chicago Bears, would then go through the medical examination, and at that point, when everything checks out, the Bears would, be, would feel comfortable moving forward with him and giving him some weapons like DeAndre Swift. So, First sort of at bat here in free agency, uh, the Bears making sure taking a swing and getting DeAndre Swift. Yeah, the report that we have a 24 million, a 15 million of that guaranteed. Uh, in terms of the running back market, uh, JJ, is this about what you would expect? Uh, yeah, I'm still going to wait on on those because the the money's going to be interesting. So, um, and and what's a real guarantee versus you know uh, essential guarantees? Uh, but three for twenty four, generally speaking, uh, sort of makes sense. But again, we, we got to wait till all those details come through. Yeah, that would be an annual AAV of uh, eight million. Now you see Saquon Barkley at the top of the notable free agent running backs. So uh, we we speak of the Eagles, uh, you know, losing DeAndre Swift uh, to the Bears now there's talk that the Eagles might be interested in Saquon Barkley. What do you have on that? Yeah, multiple sources are telling me that Sa Saquon Barkley is going to be pursued by the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I believe the Giants do want Barkley back, but um, we'll see if they're going to get into any sort of um, you know, competition for Barkley here on the open market. Um, it became fairly clear uh, about a half hour ago or so uh, that the Eagles were really going to make a run at Barkley. So uh, still plenty of time left to determine uh, what that deal could look like if they will actually get it across the finish line. Plenty of other teams that could be in the market for a running back. Houston uh, certainly up there. Uh, but for right now, the Eagles uh, keeping a very close eye on their NFC East rival. Yeah, and as we saw on the list, uh, there are free agent running backs available, but uh, the Eagles apparently reportedly interested in Saquon Barkley, 962 in terms of yards last year, six touchdowns. News is going to be coming in thick and fast throughout the day today and throughout this week as free agency opens in the NFL. Be sure to download the CBS Sports app where we will bring you all of the latest. Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco here in the studio with me. Uh, let's break down this DeAndre Swift move to the Bears. Brady, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson were the guys for the Bears last year. Now they add Swift, who's a proven thousand-year back. Yeah, a, a little bit surprising. I mean, not in the sense that, look, he's a good player. He's a playmaker. He can catch the football, run the football well. Clearly, whether it's who they draft or Justin Fields, whatever the, the Bears decide to do, they're going to need some help and some balance in the running game. Uh, I don't think this is their biggest priority, though, the fact that this is one of their first moves, uh, or at least for one of their first announced moves is a bit surprising. If you break it down, really, it's a, a two-year deal as far as the guarantees, at least what's being reported, yeah. and then kind of we'll see, which is uh, not atypical to a running back's contract in, in this spot. 
I would have done this. I mean, you have two young running backs. You can draft another one in the fourth round and you want to bring him to camp. Maybe he'll be a running back. Maybe even bring in a free agent running back and maybe he'll be the running back. They're everywhere. You don't pay running backs. Look, Swift was pretty good last year. He had a good year for the Eagles. Year before, Miles Sanders had a really good year for the Eagles. Then went to Carolina as a free agent and averaged 3.3 per rush. Fairness to him, I agree with you. Carolina wasn't very good uh, in terms of what they did on offense. But running backs, you don't pay them. And, and I, I will never pay a running back unless... I'm a team on the verge of going over the top, and I can get a guy, for example, like Saquon Barkley, who can catch the ball out of the backfield. No, Swift's good at catching the ball out of the backfield, too, but I just don't think the Bears are in that position where they need to do this. Uh, Edge, it would have been a thought, like, as far as all I still your think resources. They, they will. They, they have to. They will. Yeah. Uh, you know, some other spots in the secondary, too, as they made some, some cap casualty cuts in yeah. there as well. So just thought they had other higher priorities. I agree. The running back position. I point. agree. All right. Okay. Well, uh, what about the Bears overall, though? I mean, in terms of some of the moves that they made, they they get Swift, uh, but Jalen Johnson. I mean, you know, you oh. talk about some of the issues that they have. Obviously, in the draft, you know, what they do with Justin Fields? Do they stay? With that that to me is where the conversation stops. Do you think it, that that's where no, it's it, going to set it's, it out? It's what they do with Justin Fields because if they continue to keep waiting, now you're playing the gambling game of all right. Let's go through free agency. Let's go through the draft. And if a team doesn't get their quarterback, maybe that makes it more, it more enticing to trade for. But I would think as of right now, if we're playing musical chairs, as these teams are starting to fill their quarterback needs. Whatever teams want to trade for Justin Fields and whatever they're willing to give up is probably the most you're going to get for him. So if Caleb Williams or whoever else is in this draft class is your quarterback of the future at number one, you best go ahead and get, get ahead of all this and announce a trade of wherever Justin Fields will be going next. At least that's how I see it. Where's he going, though? That's the question. There's no. There, the word is there's not much of a market out there for him, and and Atlanta. But, but probably, I'm saying again, you got to take whatever is there if you can. Right, but Atlanta's probably sitting there saying, okay, if we get Kirk Cousins, we don't want Justin Fields, and they're putting their, you know, their priority making Kirk Cousins the number one priority for him. If they don't get him, then Fields could be the fallback guy. He is an Atlanta guy. It would make some sense to get a young quarterback in there with the skills and uh, that he has. But I don't think there's a great market for him. So, what do you take for him? A three? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, I, you got to take something because clearly they're moving on from him. That, that's evident now. They have made the decision. They're moving on from him. So Caleb Williams will be the pick at number one. They're moving on from him unless they trade it down and got extra picks and maybe took Jaden Daniels, which is still a possibility. To well. me, it's about Atlanta is kind of that domino where whatever they decide to do with Cousins will ultimately then dictate what happens, I think, in Chicago as far as where Justin Fields goes. Because to Pete's point, it, it would make some sense. You know, he's from there. They've got some weapons there. I think he could fit within that system that Zach Robinson will run with the Atlanta Falcons if Cousins goes back to Minnesota. If Cousins goes to Atlanta, you know, there was, would Minnesota be willing to give up something in, in exchange for Fields to That's have them question. for a year and see? I don't know. But the other teams you'd be looking at are Denver, Las Vegas. They have a need, and they're all kind of grouped together there in the draft, too, where they may not get the guy they really want in the first round, or they may have to take a guy like they feel like is more of a developmental project, whether it's J.J. McCarthy or whoever else they see. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things that could happen between now and then, but I'll just again say this. They need to decide and whatever they're going to do to get it done now. Otherwise, that trade compensation goes way down the tubes. You know, it's funny you mentioned to the Vikings or whatever. In the old days, you never traded inside a division. The Vikings and Lions traded inside the division a couple different times. And, and TJ Hawkinson, they were trading. Yeah. The and then yeah. the draft picks last year. Remember, they moved up and down the board, and the Vikings helped them get their players. So I think this is one of those scenarios where maybe they do something like that. But you asked the overall question about the Chicago Bears. I think the Bears are moving in a great direction. I really do. I, I think from a talent standpoint, they have two young tackles. You love that. You want to have two young tackles. Left tackle, right tackle, both young players, good players. One was a rookie last year. You have Cole Komet. You have receiver. You can get another receiver. If you want. If you can't get a pass rusher, and the word is Daniil Hunter might be in play for them to add to the other side. That would Jeez. be great for them to go with Sweat. <laughs> that would give them bookends. And you have bookend corners because Tyreek Stevenson as a rookie was really good, and you have Jalen Johnson now. So I think they're moving in the right direction. And if Caleb Williams is what everybody thinks he can be, and I, I'm still not on that train yet but if he is even close to what people think he can be they're going to be a playoff team down the line but do you think the same way if they end up 
I don't know if you want to say having to keep Fields, but if the market just isn't there, if they have Justin Fields, do you feel that same way that they're still heading in that direction? No, there's a possibility they could end up just saying, oh, you know what? The market isn't great for Justin Fields. We'll just keep him and draft the quarterback anyways and let him go to camp and maybe Fields plays early and then the kid takes over. We don't know how that plays out, but you don't have to get rid of him. You, that's, you know, if the market isn't there, you don't have to get rid of him. Yeah, and you never know. I mean, this is the NFL. There's nothing wrong with stacking two quarterbacks, one that has the potential of continuing to become the quarterback you hope and then the guy that you hope will be the guy. So uh, that might honestly be at this point, if they don't feel like there's a trade market, maybe it's the safest way if you're not going to get that su something significant back in return for them. So. If you're the Raiders, w would you rather have Justin Fields or Aiden O'Connell? Justin Fields. Yeah. I mean, it's not even a right. question. Right. So I think somebody like the Raiders needs to make some kind of decision there to go get Justin Fields. Raiders. What about the Commanders? Patriots. I don't think well, they're all drafting. I mean, yeah, they're drafting right there, quarterbacks. So I'm just, I'm just throwing. Yeah, it no, up they're there. drafting. They're you're two, one, two, and three are going to get quarterbacks if they want them in that spot. They're getting quarterbacks, so they're not going to, they're not going to go make a move for Justin Fields. All right, Pete Frisco, Brady Quinn here is uh, NFL free agency. The window opens, and we are getting some moves that are happening, and there's going to be a lot going on. And you want to stay updated? You know how you do that? You download the CBS Sports app, scan that QR code right now to download it. You'll be getting updates as they happen.